Hey guys, it's Justin again. Uh, today I'd like to teach you about servos. Um, I gave you each two servos in your kits, and they should look something like this. Um, they should actually probably look exactly like this because I bought them in the same kit. Um, what this is, is it's an electric motor, but it's a special kind of electric motor. Now most electric motors will just continually spin in one direction, and then if you reverse polarity, they'll continuously spin in the other direction. Um, this has one of those inside of it, but it's a little more complicated than that. This is uh, a motor that can be precisely positioned. So while this will not turn all the way around, it'll only go 180 degrees one way or the other, you can precisely position exactly where to turn it. So this allows you to control things rather than just power them. Um, for example, a regular DC motor would be used on a remote control car to make it move forward. However, a servo motor would be used uh, on the front to s help you steer the front wheels. Um, these things are often used, uh, pretty much primarily used, in uh, RC hobbies, so radio control, boats, planes, cars, things like that. They're often called RC servos. Um, they come in all shapes and sizes. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, there, there's um, you'll notice three wires on them. There's always a uh, black, red, and yellow. Sometimes it comes in like brown, red, and orange. Uh, in any case, the orange or yellow one's the control pin, and then the red and the darker colored one are the power. So a convention to always know is that red means positive voltage. Uh, black or brown in this case uh, means ground and that yellow is often the control pin. So uh, this that that's what you're going to hook these up to and I'll show you that in just a second. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to get three jumper wires like this one and it doesn't matter what color they are I'm using the yellow ones simply because the yellow ones are longer. So get three jumper wires you're going to need those because you're going to be plugging these into the servo and the other end of them into the Arduino. Um, because I actually broke my little blue servo like the ones you have, I won't be able to get this guy up and working today for you. So instead I have a stand-in, which is this guy, a very large servo. Um, this is one that I bought for the purposes of hooking up to a, uh, a kid's Power Wheels toy and making it uh, autonomous, so making it move by itself. This will will control the steering column. Anyways, it's basically exactly the same as the ones you have. It's controlled the same way with the same uh, uh, the same red, black, and yellow uh, wires. Um, so it, it'll make a pretty good example. Also, since it's bigger, it's probably easier for you guys to see in the video. So what I want you to do. So I want, to take, I want you to take your jumper wires, and I want you to put them in the connector at the end here, and drive them in pretty deep, as far as you can go. I know it's hard to not bend up the wire, but try to get it in there. Um, and it doesn't matter if these are the same color, just know which one connects to which of the colored wires. That is important. So, um, anyways, once you have this, what I want you to do is I want you to take the one that's coming out of the red, which I believe on yours should be the middle one. Yep, on both of ours, it's the middle one. Take that one, and you need to find the spot on the Arduino marked 5V. Now, I'll give you a hint. It's right down there. So, let me hold it up to the screen there. Uh, you can kind of see it. It's right there. It says 5V. Uh, that is 5 volts positive DC current. So I'm going to hook that one into 5V. Then you take the one that's coming out of the black wire. Um, in your case, I believe it's brown. And you plug it in right next to that in the one marked G and D for ground. Um, or actually any of the uh, pins on the Arduino labeled G and D, they all go to the same ground. So, oops, mine came out there, the 5V. 
They might not stay, and if they don't stay, just reconnect them when you get the chance. Um, and the last one, I want you to put on the other side of the Arduino, on the top, and I want you to put it into pin 9. Um, pin 9 should have a little squiggly mark by it, and that's important. Um, since this is the control pin, a uh, servo requires what's called PWM to be able to control where you set the, uh, uh, what's also called the servo horn. That's this little plus sign guy. Um, you need PWM, and there's only certain pins on the Arduino that can output PWM. Um, if you're interested, that stands for pulse width modulation, and that has to do with kind of a, a sawtooth signal that you're sending it, but you don't have to worry about that just, just now. So anyways, when you're done, your Arduino will look like this. Two wires are going in down here on the 5 volts and ground. One wire going in here on pin 9 next to a little squiggly mark. Um, from there, it's time to go play with our code window here. So I want you to just, we're not even going to write any code today, we're just going to go and run one of the examples. So go to File, Examples, Oops. scroll down to Servo, there's a, a section named Servo, and I want you to open up the one named Sweep. So File, Examples, Servo, Sweep. And it'll open a, a new window here, and I'm just going to uh, make that the main the size of the rest of my window and I might um, might make my font a little smaller here so we can all see what's going on in this program okay so uh, I'll just walk you through this code a little bit so we know what's going on uh, the code is really what I'd like you to focus on in a lot of these projects because uh, that's really what the microcontroller does. You write code that goes on here. The connecting up wires, eh, that's, <laughs> that's just uh, details uh, spoken from a true software guy rather than a hardware guy, which is, you know, I do software, not hardware. So I'm a little biased there. Um, anyways, uh, you'll see right at the top here, we have this line that you haven't seen before. Uh, that is include servo.h and has a few other characters in there too. Um, all you need to know about this is that brings in what's called a software library that helps us control a servo. Um, so in other words, all the, the, the minute details on how to make this servo move, we don't have to know that when we're programming it. All we have to know is that to bring in this library and uh, it'll do the rest if we just call it. And the way we call it is by declaring what's called a variable here named servo, um, attaching it to the pin we want, pin 9 in this case. Remember we plugged in the pin 9 on the Arduino. Um, and then calling write, where we actually write uh, a position to it. That's what POS stands for here. It means position. So without boring you with too much of the details, what happens in this loop method, and remember this, this loop gets called again and again and again, is that it has two loops inside of it. One that makes, makes the servo go from position 0 to 180, 0 degrees to 180 degrees, um, stopping for 15 milliseconds between each one. And then another loop that goes from 180 to 1. Um, also stopping at uh, 15 millisecond increments. So what that's going to do is it's going to make this thing move on its own to go all the way to one side. And when it gets there, turn around and go all the way back and repeat. So it'll just kind of keep moving back and forth the full length the servo can turn. Um, well, now that we have that up and going, and I'm going to hold the servo up here so when it starts moving you can see it, I'm going to hit the uh, upload button here which will compile and upload it to the Arduino. And if all my pins are plugged in correctly, which it looks like they are, we should see this guy start moving. So it's compiling, it's uploading, and there we go. So you can see the thing moving on its own. It's sweeping back and forth from one side to the other, thus the name of this program, Sweep. Um, if you followed along, your servo should be moving now too. Uh, if not, check your check your pins. Make sure you have your five volts uh, ground and pin nine all connected, 
and everything should be working. Um, once you have this going, uh, I again encourage you to go in here and change things, like say what happens if we change oops, this value here. Huh, can't seem to type today, huh? Um, from 15 to, uh, well, let's just do 5 right there. 15 to 5. I'm guessing it's going to make you go really fast in one direction, but slow in the other direction. Yep. See? It goes fast in one direction, slow in the other. Um, also, we could do something else, such as... Oops. Um, maybe instead of going from 180, I can go from... Oops. Uh... 30 to 150, 150, and I'm going to just say this is 31. Let's try that. And now instead of going the full distance, it's going to go a partial distance. So, you can see how you can change things around in software, and now things are, ne are n not just lighting up in the real world, they're also moving in the real world. So, you write code over here, and things move here. Um, hope you enjoy. Uh, keep in mind that this is kind of the basics of how robotics works. In fact, this would be considered a robotics project. Um, uh, I, I really recommend playing around with the code and seeing what you can make this thing do on your own. Um, enjoy, and thanks for watching. Email me if you have any questions, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can.